Welcome to Cognitive Toolbox Tool number seven, Meaning Not Memory. When you establish meaning, learning has occurred. If you think you've learned something, but it doesn't have any meaning, actually, you haven't learned it. So until something has meaning, you won't have any learning. So let's explain what I mean by that in detail. Memory is very fleeting, but meaning is forever. Meaning will last forever. There are often several steps between discovering a new concept and that concept actually having meaning, and so having been learnt. So the steps often are, some of them can be jumped, but basically the steps are, we learn something for the first time and it kind of ends up in our short-term memory. That This may be anything from a few seconds to maybe several minutes. Long-term memory is remembering things over a longer period of time, maybe days, weeks, etc. And we usually do that by association, by remembering how something relates to something else. We also have a stumbling block often in the way called automated misconceptions and they need to be undone. Um, these are concepts that have become so embedded in our understanding that uh, we use them and put them in place without really thinking about them. But often, particularly in electrotechnology, there are concepts that if you're learning this for the first time, we've actually got to work at undoing them. Then. Once we've got to that stage, we start to gain some understanding around what it is we're learning. Then the next step is we actually make some meaning from it. And once that's happened, we've kind of got to the learning stage. And then finally, there's the ability to have had that meaning embedded so well and so often that we've actually automated the new learning. So there are six steps moving from memory through to meaning. So let's have a look at some educational research using the pyramid below as a guide. First, retention is not learning in and of itself, but it only implies some learning. So if you look at our pyramid on the right hand side, it starts the top there, something less than 10% um, you can learn through lecturing, about 10% about for reading, audio-visual, getting a bit better at 10%. Having something demonstrated to you um, is up around 30%. If you can then discuss what it is you've been learning with your teacher or with others, we're getting up to 50%. Um, if you can actually then practice it, actually do it yourself with your own hands, um, we're getting up to 75% then if you can actually take all of that and teach someone else how to do it, then your retention or your ability to um, automate, remember and learn something ends up being 90% plus. So if we take that pyramid of learning and we apply it to our six steps, so short-term memory kind of fits into the lecture and reading category. Long-term memory, the audio-visuals, the demonstration type stuff. Some of that automated misconceptions and the undoing of it can be uh, either embedded or undone with discussion. Then gaining understanding. As soon as you can actually take what you've learned and reproduce it yourself, then we've got practice by doing and we're gaining understanding. And then finally, once we have made meaning, we know it that well that we're able to actually teach someone else about it. And then finally, by being able to repetitively teach others, we will find that we will eventually automate the learning. So there is good reason for why different things fall into each of those categories. So we're now going to look at 
each of the categories in turn. So short-term memory. Short-term memory, lecture and reading. So um, just hearing things, only probably 10% is going to stick because you're not going to be able to connect much meaning to it. And when they say reading here, they mean cursory reading, not um, deep reading, as in read a bit, spend a lot of time reflecting on it, but just reading over something. Quite often, I will read a novel and I'll read two chapters and then I stop and think and I have difficulty remembering what I read in the first chapter. Unless there's some links in the storyline to remind me. So, believe it or not, reading is only going to help you at 10%. So there's things that are going to help you is the range of reading types, the range of lecture types. Those kinds of things are going to help. Um, the type of lecturing, the type of reading, whether you're reading from a novel or you're reading from a textbook, those kinds of things. And then finally, the thing we call the encoding, how distinctive the encoding is. Um, you'll notice here in this set of slides, I've tried to use a lot of uh, colour and things to make the coding or the encoding of what you're learning here stick in your short and medium term memories using a bit of colour, a nice colourful pyramid, and hopefully the tone and encouragement of my voice is also making that encoding distinctive. Next, we've got uh, long-term memory, and that's the kind of the audio, visual, and demonstration. The reason that works so well is because you're actually starting to build mental pictures, mental understandings of what those things are into your long-term memory. Through associations, you're making connections with learning that you've already had underpinning things, and you're starting to build those partial mental models, at least partially, or you're reworking a model. You might already have a particular concept or model in your head, and that partial model is being adjusted and changed, and audiovisual and demonstration is good for that into your long-term memory. But long-term memory actually is not learning. So we have some Automated um, misconceptions often. Misconceptions can be challenged or they can be reinforced through discussion. I've seen students talk about things together and I know they've all got the wrong misconception and they're reinforcing it. So sometimes we have to stop, think and reflect. Old mental models need to be prepared to be challenged and questioned. That's important. Sometimes a new mental model has to be developed altogether. So sometimes you've got to dump your old model and say to yourself, no, that's not working. I'm not learning it. I'm not understanding it. I've got to think of a new way to do that. And that's often supported in a learning community. You've got to learn to talk and take risks and maybe express your picture and have others um, support it or punch holes in it. So it's, it's a matter of taking some risks with those misconceptions. So it's also about seeing what other people think. So having your ideas confirmed or challenged is an important part of making sure that stuff that you might think you know, you may not know at all. Then we move into gaining understanding. If you can actually practice, if you actually do the concept, particularly you can do it two or three times in a row, you've obviously gained the understanding. So practice by doing. So in electrotechnology, our practice by doing can often be to connect up a circuit, take the measurements, confirm the operation of the circuit um, using some standard formula, maybe like Ohm's law, and then doing some mathematics. So being able to take it from your head to your hands or from your hands back to your head again is a very important skill to have as you're gaining understanding. As you're getting to that very high level, 
It's about being able to see a circuit diagram, build the circuit, see the circuit, and be able to draw the circuit diagram. So that's this back and forth between head and hand practice by doing. So testing the reality and application of the mental model you've developed. So you've got to proactively build these mental models in electrical physics and test their reliability, test their application, and see if they're starting to make sense and we get some repeatability about them. Four, we're moving up into the really high order now, being able to make meaning. In other words, being able to teach others. In other words, you've made the meaning so well and your understanding is so deep and thorough that you'd be able to sit down and explain it to somebody else. So this is the ability to be able to transcend the physics itself, to be able to see all the relationships and what's going on in a particular circuit at any time, whether it is a circuit diagram or it's the physical circuit constructed. So making your model, mental models, understanding and making that available to others. And often the way I get you to make your models um, available to others, I test you using exams. So often we're going to give you theory exams, practical exams, because I'm getting you in effect to teach me what you know to see whether you have learnt it. So this requires deep understanding. So once you've made meaning, you're able to do those exams well because you're able to use the questions, use the practical exercises to demonstrate to someone like me, the assessor, or whatever teacher it is, that you actually do have a deep understanding that you can take it from your head to your hands, to your hands to your head, and you can do that repeatedly. You can demonstrate it over and over and over again. It's what we call being competent. And our final step, automation. Automation comes after deep understanding is often repeated. That it takes no or just a little bit of mental effort to be able to access the knowledge. So I teach a lot of AC at the moment and I have done so for many, many years. So I have automated the process and the models. I don't have to think a great amount to do the circuits and the calcs myself. I have to do a lot of effort to make that clear to my students though. So I have to spend a lot of time unpacking my automation to make sure all the little bits come together so a student can understand how my thinking works in the hope that I'm able to teach it to them. So this is normally achieved by simple practice of a concept that is well understood. Again, doing it over and over again until you're making it automatic. So our take homes for memory is fleeting and meaning is forever. Short term memory by definition is short, very fleeting. Normally for me, I'm a dyslexic and my short term memory is literally four or five seconds and I can only remember between one and three items. So I have a very, very limited short term memory. I have an, often have to use a pen and paper to write things down quickly because I know I have very poor short term memory. My long term memory, I again, is not all that great being dyslexic. So again, I have to use my long term memory, make associations quickly, find ways to connect them, either in a story or quite often I'll use a highlighter and colour is a way that I build things quickly into my long term memory. I can also have automated misconceptions and I have to make sure I can challenge and allow those to be undone. Four, once you start to gain the understanding, and here the secret is the gaining of the understanding of the physics, not the gaining of the understanding of the modeling processes. Many students gain understanding of the mathematical modeling without really understanding the underlying physics. We must make the effort to gain the understanding of the physics. And once we do that, 
then we're making meaning. And once that meaning has been made, we can practice and practice and practice it, and that automation comes, and we can thoroughly say, we have now got meaning that will literally last you the rest of your life.